Hello, everyone. Welcome to Connections for Life. I'm Ted Pete. I'm Chad Kuvo from uh, May of 2022. Hey, with the He-Man background, I'm not sure why. Because I don't look like He-Man. What did you type in to get that? It was one of the popular ones. What? What was it? It, it wasn't. It was just on the popular page. I, oh. I can tell you what it's called. You look like it's called, what do you like here? What do you think it's called? Squirrel. Fatty. Uh, Oddly yeah. enough, it's called Chipmunk. Big Cheeks. Big Cheeks. That is surprising. No, oh, that's appropriate. Oh, I can see again, too. Can you take that off? You look like you just ate a whole bunch of carbs. <laughs> it's only funny because it's true. It's true. But true. <laughs> hey, normal chat is back. Well, yeah. like whatever the, other chat. the normal of Chad. I got it. I got it. I got it. So what's up? All right. How was your weekend, Chadwick? Good. I don't know what I did. I, I, yeah, no. Um, oh, Zoe and Zoe and Colton, they've been dating for, they've been together for two years now. She's only years. 16. <laughs> they've been together for 10 years. They, it was they, their they, anniversary. They, so they're pretty serious ever since. It was their, it was their anniversary. So I ended up going to, uh, Cheesecake, cheesecake factory. I did not. I just dropped them off and walked around, but I did not do that. <laughs> but that was yeah. That was, there's your highlight. Um, okay. I think that was it. I didn't. There's not. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, Joe? I can't find my pencil. He's very disappointed about it. And you don't make lead. As I have one right here. I have the lead, but my kids steal them. Um, nothing. I just worked on the house this weekend. Um, I did a lot of stuff around the house. I took the the. Know, it doesn't matter. I just did a lot of. It stuff doesn't matter. I I painted a lot. I hung up some new. I framed out one of the doors. I I don't know. I just worked around the house. Hung up some lights. No soccer. No, they're on a break for like three weeks. Hey, it is. How about you, Teddy? Uh, well, I took Thursday and Friday off for basketball, and then. Nothing all weekend. Uh, that's not a good sign, then. Huh? It was well, yeah, we did, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw your post. Uh, you yeah, so we didn't have the results we want. We didn't. We were unable to defend our title as the uh, as the upstate New York. But country. you were able to have a free weekend. But I was able to have a free weekend where I accomplished a uh, lot of nothing. Um, so you know, didn't. I, so you didn't outwork everyone. No, I did not outwork everyone. <laughs> This weekend i did a lot around my house um i have inherited a broken window directly by my office to do a, a ricocheting lacrosse ball so the window right here is tsh. yeah and it's, it's nice. a really odd size window so it's going to cost me an absurd amount of money to get it fixed sweet is it are you going to replace the whole window or just the glass oh yeah whole window <laughs> can you get the vision oh yeah that's nice High quality right there. High quality. Whole window. My quality H2O. High, qu high quality I Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. I just, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of depressed. Um, About what? The window? It's okay, <laughs> Josh. I, I, can afford it. I can afford to fix the window. Last week in August, I did like this summer, like went like this. I don't even know what I did. Any, I didn't do anything. Like it was just, I don't know. I, was, I can't believe it's going to be getting cold. Like the other day, it's hotter than hell right now. Yeah. But, the other day, it was like I woke up and it was like that fall, like you know, uh, dewy yeah, cold, yeah. and I was like, "Oh my god!" When it's actually that. fall, you don't really mind it because it's not too bad. But when it's the middle of summer and it's the first time, you're yeah. like, "This." No, is I like really, I mind it. Like anybody that says they like fall, I, I, I don't. Lindsay understand. said it the other day. She was like, "I really like fall," and I was like, "What?" That was awesome. just like the beginning of winter. Yeah, That's like yeah. liking the beginning of a cold. Springs the end of winter. Like I just yeah. like summer. Yeah. yeah, you know, I like I like spring. <laughs> Spring's my favorite. I like it's spring and summer. I hate winter. Like and summer. Yeah. People are like, oh, leaves change. Yeah, it means people, things are dying. Yes. Yeah, that's a hundred percent true. But you couldn't have day, spring without fall. To change. You could. You could live in Arizona. They don't have you, fall. No, then perfect. you just have summer. Perfect. <laughs> but it's hundred and twenty. Perfect. I've heard you complain about Phoenix. It's hot. <laughs> so but now they don't double snow. retire somewhere where it's warm all right 
Probably in the Up same communal area. Weird. That would be that that'll be a heck of a retirement community if the three of us were in it. You imagine that? Be be incredible. Incredible. It would be. I mean, I'd be so happy. <laughs> So uh, maybe the only totally. three families in it. Yeah, we, I was we'll gonna say we would get we get kicked out in like twenty minutes if anybody else was there. But yeah, I mean it'd be kind of like the uh, SGA show. We'd be kicked out in twenty minutes. <laughs> just you, and then we yeah, all just you. Out. I was in the bathroom. I was trying to finagle some deal. Yeah, he was trying to get up there to drive the cars early. Yeah, you got us tossed. I was anyway. talking with the customer. Yeah, at the true. loudest level possible. It's, I, it's listen, I walk around on like a four, Chad. I know this. I didn't I, say I, it was really your fault. It, it, 150 decibels. <laughs> yeah, it's great. The Anyways, the it doesn't matter. Like no one even knows what we're talking about. <laughs> Next. So. Next. Uh, so it's that time. It's that time. Chad, your okay. background switch ready. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, I'm a little slow today. Gas back, 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 the minerals to deliver the same quantity of energy as a natural gas plant. Okay. Hold on. So, repeat, repeat. So when you manufacture solar panels, you have to use minerals. Like you have to use yes. glass, metals, all yeah. kinds of things, you know, sand. Yeah. Um, so it requires X amount of more minerals to produce a solar panel that is, is to deliver the same quantity of energy as a natural gas plant. Okay. I understand the question now. That makes sense? Yes. So um, the, the choices are three times, 10 times, two times, eight times. That's nine, eight. Eight, eight times. Eight. Eight's my answer times. as well. It's 10 times. Mm. Wow. It requires 10 times the minerals to deliver the same quantity oh, of energy. Yeah. Told you it's 10. So. Shut like up. I said, like I said, 10. You know, it's it's weird because I think people like to, you know, you know, like to like fall in love with the green energy solutions, you know, but we need to like, again, people pay attention don't understand where things come from in well, general. There's the, you're not thinking about the materials that go into the manufacturing, transporting, transportation, installing, maintenance, um, disposal, anything. I mean, if you, I, and not just that example, because it's a perfect one comparing the solar, but you know, we talk about it a lot, like any plastics, anything you use. Look, if you just look around, everything there is made from a fossil fuel. Everything. Oh, it's like, I, it like kills me with like EV cars. People are like, oh, you know, they're better for the environment. Everything in the car is made from petroleum products. Even the energy that's going into your car is made from made fossil fuel. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. That's it. It wasn't a great one this week. No, no, I like that. That was good. That was okay, though. She was all right. I enjoyed it, but midway through, somebody sent a docu document to my printer, and it started printing. And I'm we like, didn't hear it. mute. We didn't oh. hear it. I know. I know. So, so my printer hasn't worked in two years. It's on, though. More than that. It's on, So uh, <laughs> who do we have on the show today? I, I, I'd like to tell you. You're guys. the guy. You're the you guy. You're the Jew. So today, we have my good friend, Colonel John Oshevsky. John is the senior vice president of customer care for Huntsville Utilities, and him and I met down at the Energy World Net uh, conference this year. We hit it off right away uh, due to you know sports, and then come to find out we had so much in common, and and you know the industries and this kind of stuff. He's a he's a great man, a military veteran, uh, spent over twenty years in the United States Army. He. Uh, in addition to his role as senior vice president for Huntsville, he's also the uh, chairman of the APGA. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I did it right. American, American Public Gas, Gas Association. American Public Gas Association. And he also just today launched his own. He actually launched it three weeks ago, and I just watched it and shared it today for the first time. Three uh, weeks ago, that was I saw it for the first time today. So today yeah. we realized that John, three weeks John, ago. <laughs> yeah, three weeks ago, launched his show, and I was able to watch it. What's it called? Fire. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Freedom to Fuel. It. Freedom to Fuel. Ooh. And he talks about it in I'll send it to you, yeah. that we're going to bring him on for right now. So without further ado, welcome to the show, John O'Shea. 
Hello, Colonel John. How you doing, my friend? Welcome to the show. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, it's great to be here, Ted. I appreciate you doing this, man. We're going to have to do this. I'm going to have to reverse it with you when, when, when my day comes. But, um, uh, I, I, Ted, I always, I, everybody asks me how I got into this business, and I said I blame it all on you on the, on the podcast thing. Because uh, the first podcast I did was with EWN out in out. That doesn't uh, count. That's like the starter podcast. Well, <laughs> popping shots well, at our boys, Jim and James. That's well, for you, Jim and James, if you ever watch. Yeah. Well, and, and Jim and James, I commented about them on my first attempt. It hasn't gone public. It hasn't gone public yet. But anyway, Ted, great for having me. Thanks for having me. I follow you through your uh, basketball worlds and being on your Facebook and all that. And I love what you're doing with our kids. Well, cool. thank you. Well, Thanks. I will start off with in the very first question that we ask every single person that comes on the show. Mm -hmm. um, how, John, how did you get yourself into the natural gas industry? If you want to just talk about your journey and how you ended up in the chair you're sitting in today. Yeah, you know, real quick. I, I, I retired the Army in 08 out of Huntsville at a Redstone Arsenal and uh, did some stuff for four or five years. And then all of a sudden, uh, a guy named Jay Stowe, who is now uh, CEO, uh, president of JEA, Jacksonville Energy Authority down in um, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, mm -hmm. fifth, fifth largest uh, municipal electric. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, it, it, it teaches you that uh, you're always in an interview when you're looking for a job every day, you're in an interview. And I spoke in front of 400 people back in, I don't know, 07. And I obviously hit a home run because he remembered that five years later when he came and asked That's me cool. to come take, get a job at Huntsville Utilities. Very cool. Well, that was That's really neat. That was 13 and about 15, he goes, um, I'm going to play in the electric world, John. I need somebody to get in the gas world. I didn't even really know how to spell gas. You know what I mean? Um, Eddie still doesn't. That's well, an <laughs> army thing that you don't know how to spell. We'll hold that again. So, well, so anyway, what, what, what happened was um, I'm customer. My job at Huntsville Utilities is senior vice president for customer care. So all the, all the guy, all the business, you know, taking care of people, that's my lane, but uh, they wanted a senior guy to do gas. So I got, I went to my first meeting. I was welcomed very well by that community. Um, they liked the idea of getting a retired army colonel on the board and representing Huntsville Utilities, which is 16th largest natural gas uh, municipality in the country, natural gas. And uh, then after six years, now here I am chairman, and I've been told, and I, I didn't have a dog in this hunt, but I've been told that I, I'm the fastest one to go from getting into the board and getting mm -hmm. to this position as anybody. But it's because um, no one wants to do it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when they know, you know the headache that it comes along with. Well, it, it does. I will tell you, it's a lot more work than I thought. Um, you know, we all, I'm sure you all have done nonprofit boards, and not all of them are all that hard. But this one here, they, I mean, they got, when you're second chair, first chair, and then the chair, they got stuff they want you to do. And so anyway, I'm fascinated by this world and uh, I'm fascinated about the things it can do. And believe it or not, we're, all, I mean, I think we're all ignorant. We were ignorant at one time. I didn't really pay much attention to turn on a light switch. I didn't pay much attention to turn on gas. Most just, people don't, John. That, that shit happens. Yeah, and um, well, now, now it's a different ball game. I know what goes into a substation. I know what goes into natural gas. And I know what goes into water. See, we make our own water here. We're distributors. Oh, wow. We're distributors. We don't. Make, we take water out of the river. <laughs> yeah, we're, I was like, you're making water over there, buddy. I we're not that. Jesus, and we haven't gone there to wine. No and, wine uh, either, huh? <laughs> no, no. Um, well, my wife I just that's incredible, that. though. Just That's a really good question about that, though. Like, would you be willing if, if I mean, it'd probably most likely be me because I'm the only one that would ever get down there. But would you ever be willing to let me take a tour of your like facilities and see what you guys oh, want? I do expect it. Well, here's the deal. Okay. You come, well, first of all, you come anytime um, you want. We'll do that. But more importantly, if you come for the conference, yeah, I can get you, I can get you to see everything. And then I'll do one step farther. If you're coming in for the conference, I don't have this done yet, but I know I can do it. Sunday of the conference, I don't have the date in front of me right now. It's in May, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to give uh, as many people who want a tour on Sunday to drive through Redstone Arsenal and cool. show everybody what's going on at Redstone Arsenal. Yeah, I would love that, man. And I'll yeah. definitely be there. Just for those of you that are listening, yeah, I, that's 
the the APGA show that's going to be the was that the, is that the spring conference is that what that's the spring one and that's the uh, supply conference and that's going to be in May of 2023 in Huntsville. Yeah, yeah. The dates are up on the American Public Gas side, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Well, well that's good a thing great segue way because so we know how you got into the industry now. And now we're talking about one of the events that you're 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 obviously part of. But that's because you serve as the chairman of the American Public Gas Association. Now, right. how long have you been a member of that, and and what's your role in it, and what what are you really doing with it now? Well, I've been in I've been in uh, APG I believe about seven years now, and uh, two terms, and then you know because I'm chairman, it gave me another term. I mean, I was I got picked to be in the line because you got to do you got to pay your dues. <laughs> You don't just get to be chair one day. You got to be second, first, and all that. Um, and then what am I doing? Um, you know, I I believe that uh, my theme this year is freedom to fuel. And like we were talking pre the show, um, I, I wanted a choice. And, you know, that's what America is all about. It's a freaking choice. Yep. And um, that's what veterans, that's what, I mean, I don't know. I know that Ted is. That's what we fought for is the, to, to the freedom, the freedom to choose. So I'm running my mouth at APGA when I'm up there uh, a month and a half ago with uh, Aubrey, who is the lady that handles that for, and she's talented as all get out. That whole staff is talented, American Public Gas. But nevertheless, and I'm running my mouth talking choice, choice, choice. And all of a sudden she goes, I can see in her eyes, hey, you know, you're, you're an Army Colonel. We'll just say the word freedom. And then she used the word fuel. And then I don't know if you've got an opportunity to see it, but this is the magazine that just came out. That's awesome. And look at the, um, and I didn't have a damn thing to do with that. They, that's they wicked. That. So that's wicked. That's, you think they could send that to us if we could do that? You, you got to put that on a t-shirt or something. That's awesome. Yeah, that's incredible. So anyway, um, my intent this year is to just go crazy on getting out about choice. For instance, my plan is to get to Alabama. I, I can do Alabama easy, but go to Georgia's uh, conference where they have it in there, do it in Florida, do it in Alabama, I mean, do it in uh, Mississippi, anywhere that's got it and go in and actually just go to the meeting and just talk and hang out like we do when we go to conferences and you know, talk about it. So I have an interesting question for you as far as that goes is we talk about this a lot. We, uh, we have a, an issue where we talk internally about all these things. We talk to other people like this in the gas yeah. industry. Yeah. Um, I think one of our goals, and Joe talks about this a lot, and I think you guys even talked about it before, is how to spread that word to people that yeah. don't understand. How to People that don't understand that when you flip on a light switch, it doesn't come from solar panels for the most yeah. part, maybe a tiny yeah. little part. How do we educate the masses is is the big question. How do we take that that stance? And that's kind of what you're talking about, right? I mean, well, it's yeah, and, trying and to build that. To your point, was speaking at these conferences, we're all, we're only like you just said, Chad. Talking we're only speaking it. to the freaking people that already bought into this. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you, like today, I got a wonderful email from my guys today um, because I I got a great. Um, communication shop that works for me. I need glasses and, like that. <laughs> Those are sick. Amazing. They're like, Whoop. I'm like, and I got, a, I get, a, I got an email from one of my guys this morning that um, the 10, 10 reasons. Well, anyway, ten reasons why natural gas is better than anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, historically, I just get that and send it to my 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 gas guys. Well, today right. I sent it to my CEO. I sent it to my all these other people in my outfit that think electric is the only way to go and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So um, I, we've got to push the envelope um, like this RNG going on out there. Um, one could argue we're cleaner than anybody, but nobody wants to hear that. We, we are considered a bad, 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 like coal. And, um, and, and by the way, Joe, I was going to tell you that earlier. I don't have a problem with a little bit of coal out there too. I think we're crazy for it. making it all go away. I think we're crazy in that thought process. It's crazy that it. You know what's crazy? It's crazy that we would not allow humans to have reliable energy to heat and clothe and feed their families because of a decision by somebody that will never have to ever deal with those problems. It does not make sense to point, me. Joe. There should not be one person that is impoverished. If we can burn coal for, to keep somebody alive and to make people survive today, <laughs> the fact that we wouldn't do that is the most 
ridiculous and dumbest thing that I've ever, ever thought. It, it, it's it's crazy. And, and I agree with you. And Chad, you brought up the question and John, you kind of touched on it. I mean, there, there's not one good silver bullet that's going to be like, how do we educate people? John, you said it before you got in the gas industry. You didn't know anything about gas. Like you didn't have any idea. You oh, drove no. by. No one does. Like, I, I mean, how many times, and this has happened, I know just in our group, when you, I've talked to somebody, they said, what do you do? I said, you know, that little gray thing that stays out by your house and the gas company looks, they go, oh yeah, yeah. We, yeah, that's what we do. We work in that industry. People don't even have any idea what that box does next to uh, them. And, and, and uh, just so you know, this email I got today from my guys, because they're good at this, were the top 10 reasons homeowners use natural gas. And you'd think this was so, but it's not. Energy cost reduction, energy efficiency, environmentally cleaner, heats quicker, natural gas is paid for after usage, continues to work during power outages, yeah. you know, perfect for clean, beautiful, and warm fireplaces. And natural gas sourcing rarely requires any foreign imports. Natural gas is highly versatile. It's convenient energy source and long-term cost savings. I mean, now I said that to people that think that electric's the only way to go. And I don't they even know where their electric right comes from. Yeah. No. They don't even know where the electric comes from. Most of the electric is generally, not most, but a, a yeah. very yeah. large percentage. I think it's like 40 some percent. I, I of the electric 38% or something like that. Said, yeah. it, it generated in this country is because of burning natural gas. And the craziest thing about it is, is you lose like 60% efficiencies make turning natural gas into electric. You're and actually you, losing yeah. energy. Yeah. You're actually wasting more. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and those, the, those statistics mean so much to us, but they they go to foreign, they go to, well, first of all, this, this article comes out of a magazine called Conserve Energy Future, Be Green, Stay Green. And only thing I complained about it is, as I wrote back my guy and said, What's the date of it? And it, there's no date on it. Because, yeah. you know, as soon as you send this to people, well, God dang, the price of gas yeah. is $6 or $9 yeah, yeah, yeah. or, or well, whatever. Well, I know? do know, I do know that there's some things that are being worked on. Um, I don't even know how to phrase this. Like when potentially there's a, there's a change in the House and the Senate in, in, in November, potentially, if there is one. Um, there's already bills that are being worked on to classify natural gas as green energy and clean energy. That's Absolutely. already that's already happening because because it is. Well, and we it's don't been, get the bill of any of the other, but it's thrown fuel. into that bucket. It's yeah. thrown into the bucket of fossil fuel, which it is, right? What? But not. I, I think, and we talked about this before. And I don't want to talk about this for an hour because I I could, and John clearly you could as well. Um, I, I think I think one of the things that we have to realize is as much as we sit on the gas side, right, and we advocate for our gas, you know, our 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 careers and our livelihoods and everything like that, and the things we do. One of the things that's vitally important to remember is I don't think any of us any of us care where the energy comes from. If tomorrow. Somebody figured out a way to harness as much energy as we potentially would ever need from a solar panel. We would all be okay with that. Yep. Yes. Right? I think we would. But the I fact mean, remains is that you're willing to tear down industries and subsidize technology that, that isn't good enough yet to provide those results. And I've said this a million times over. Politicians look at this and they want to be, they want to be popular. So they say, we're going to side with this. We're going to vote for this, right? But my question has always been, why wouldn't you subsidize, if you really want to get rid of coal, why wouldn't you subsidize the coal industry so you could transition those people out into jobs? That it, it, why wouldn't you spend the money there instead of building to, and working on things that aren't ever going to be able it's to get back? Work. It's yeah. crazy to me. Anyways, yeah. we can talk we, about this forever. No, with that, we could. I'll, I'll beat that to death. Well, but I mean, but, but guess what they expect us locals to do? For instance, Huntsville Utilities, we're go- we are now done with our electric AMI meters, the smart meters. Yep. And we should have been done with water and gas, but we're having some problems. Leave, leave, it, leave, leave it at that. But the <laughs> point is, seven years ago, we took those guys that were reading the meters and we went to contractor, but we found those set, those 20 some guys work within the company. Yeah. And, and we got it. They, they actually probably that's what them. you have to do. That's what you got to do. But yet our own national huh. world, they want to do this now. And all of a sudden, bam, then now we got all these unemployed people that were in the gas industry. You got a guy yeah. who's worked in the coal industry for 20 years and all of a sudden you're going to turn 20, off the job. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying yeah. that it doesn't yeah. matter. The, num- yeah. the numbers are relevant. It's just 
You teach people the skill set to work in the other industries that are going to that are going to flourish. Instead, you want to take money away from them and handicap them, which is going to it's never going to work. It's a, yeah. it's a weird dynamic as to how they operate that. But anyways, I'm sorry, we, we digress. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, the one thing I wanted to ask you about, you'd mentioned in the beginning is your, um, is your uh, military career. Yeah. You'd spent okay. quite a number of years in the army. Why don't you talk about that? That's say, how, where you got the name Colonel. That's well, how we got connected right there was his, uh, his shirt. That's how you only ever get connected with people. No, it's no, no, his shirt. Is <laughs> usually because right. people, the Citadel is it's usually because he's making fun of people that weren't Marines. That's, that's usually, huh? I wish I could turn my camera off, but I'm a No, I'm serious. You made fun, you made fun of him earlier. Because We can make fun of each other. I know. I have no, yeah, but no one ever does it to the Marines. I don't get it. No, that's what I mean. He, nobody ever picks on the Marines. Well, Anyways, back to John. The John, size sorry, of John. No <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah that's funny. also the reason nobody ever picks on Ted. We pick them on on here, and then when we're near him, we run away real quick. I don't. <laughs> oh, uh, I do. Um, I'm gone. <laughs> but John, no, seriously, how did? How long? How many years were you in the? I think 20, you said, I was in twenty-seven years. That's it. Just um, quick twenty-seven. That's incredible. Yeah. I was a logistics guy by trade. Wow. Uh, I went to the military school of South Carolina Citadel. That's how. That's oh, really wow. what caught Ted and I together because he saw my shirt, the one I'm wearing today. Mm -hmm. And you and you guys got a great American that uh, played ball for up in Ted's space, um, and he was a great young man that we we loved dearly. It, I mean, come on, think about it. We are in Texas. So side he note. walks up to me, yeah, yeah. and he what? goes, "Hey, do you know this guy? Do I know this guy? Hell, I watched him play in person at Duke this yep. year. You know, um, so you know." So that'd John, be side note, real quick, since Tyler got home, since he, since he just finished up at, at the Citadel. He's actually going to be, he's using some. Who are you guys talking about? Form and everything like that. So the point Tonight guard of the Citadel basketball team is from okay. Elmira. Okay. Got it. All right. And like, so he's trying John to had connect shirt on and I was like, Hey, do you know Tyler Moff? And he's like, do I know him? Da, 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 da. And I was like, uh, Tyler's from my hometown. He's, he's a big basketball player. I run a big basketball program. So now though, that we've had this connection, John, Tyler's actually graduated at home and he's training in our gyms while he's here before he gets ready to go play pro ball. Wow. Oh, it's wild. Cool. Yeah, so well, back to your back, back to your back career. To Sorry. Back to your career in the military. 27 years in logistics. Um, did you move around a lot? Were you stationed? Did you ever go to Iraq? Yeah. You, tell yeah, us all about yeah. that. Well, we um 21 different, I lived in 21 different places in 27 wow. years. Yeah. Uh you, you, officers move every year, every two years, every you know, whatever. Holy moly. Um, talking about living out of a suitcase. But I I will tell you that um the army that I was in was not at, well, we had Cold War going on, but was not at war until, um, well, Desert Storm, but that was a quick one. And, um, and I was in Riyadh. I was living in Riyadh when that all went down. My wife and I were in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, when the war was going. Wow. So wow. you could bring her on and get her to give a story on that. So well, that's probably be interesting, it. actually. It, it is quite interesting. Um, did you have children? Then, uh, did you do you no, have children? No, we didn't. We, we can't have any. And, well, she couldn't have any. And you want so to I have, lots of, I have lots of children. Yes, you do. I do. Um, so anyway, I, you know, then the, the Iraq thing, um, I went no for, but not like, not like Ted. I show up over there as a colonel. It's a little different situation when you're a colonel logistics He's guy. He's a Marriott. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I won't, it was a Marriott in comparison. It wasn't, but it, in comparison. But I was in uh, Kuwait at Camp Arif John. Wow. And uh, so I was, I was the number two guy for the theater and logistics. So I was the guy that uh, made sure that Hopefully, Ted had what he needed to beat the bad wow. guy. Which well, is, thank uh, you. Water fuel thank you. Yeah, thanks bullet. for all that. That's crazy. It's That's something that I know up. that I would never be able to do. <laughs> yeah, no chance. So um, anyway, I, I, it was, and so you did that, and then I, um, then I was blessed enough to get my last assignment in the Army, uh, the command Redstone Arsenal. And my job there was garrison commander, which is the uh, opener. You, if you really wanted to know what you asked earlier, what got me into all this, it was garrison commander Redstone Arsenal because – you're really the mayor of Redstone. Yeah. There's 40,000 people that drive on that arsenal every day. So, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's big, and, and it comes from all around. It comes from lower Tennessee, as far as Florence, Alabama, as far as Scottsboro, south of Coleman, and to the greatest fishing, bass fishing Ooh. lake in the world. Uh, That's why I'm coming there, Joe. So, anyway. I don't even know how to fish. 
I don't know how to fish either, but I'm going to learn here soon. I can, I know how to fish. I joke with Jack. That's why I want to go with Joe. He likes to, but he doesn't know how to. Yeah. And nor do I. Yeah, no, you're right. That's it. That's it. That's in a nutshell, except to say that I did get to fly into, uh, and that's a story we'll say for another time. I get to fly into um, Iraq and got the crap scared out of me. Um, I got to fly into Afghanistan and got the crap scared out of me. But, they shoot um, at you and stuff. And I, and I will tell you right now, now that's the most godforsaken place I've ever been in my life. Now, Afghanistan, that that that's the one you want to just think to yourself, why are we there? And you got to go through the whole rabbit hole on that one because there ain't nothing there. So I, that I, has I, to I always thought that was kind of good time to say, but. <laughs> <laughs> Once you leave there. Well, thank you, brother. That was, it was a, I, I can't imagine 27 years when you made the comment, uh, you have lots of children as, as, as a Marine who served under a tremendous leader at the Colonel position, who's now a general and whatnot. He still considers us all his kids to this day and, and acts the part. And uh, after our interaction where we met, I know that you were one of those similar leaders, my friend. So thank you, brother. Uh, I will say this before you get off that I, at Minneapolis, my Company commander, female, Jill Hageman. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. The baddest female officer I ever had in shape, could outdo push-ups, sit-ups, and everything. She is now 54, retired lieutenant colonel in the reserves, and she lived in Minneapolis. And this was incredible. I'm out with her and her two kids, and I'm telling the kids about their mom, and they don't believe it. <laughs> they don't believe it. And finally, Jill goes, That's sir, awesome. they just think of me as a soccer mom. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Was, she was a bad ass. That's, uh, that's pretty wild. We'll that's have to get her, maybe we can get her on. Would she come on and talk about it? She, she would. In fact, she's gone to work. She was with Polaris, and right oh. now she's going to work for Oshkosh Trucks, the big military truck oh. side of the world. Oh, damn. If you want to finish with Bagosh, I would have Right now, the owner of Upsco is actually in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, is he? right now. Oh, yes. I didn't know where he was. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. where he was going, but you reminded me. So, so so, John, did you retire or did you just decide you were finished? Or, I mean, how did yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 27 years, you can do 30 pre war and all that in regular peacetime involved. 30 years, the most you can do as a colonel. Um, I didn't see anything left to accomplish. Um, so I was comfortable. And my wife fell in love with Huntsville. And so um, it is what it is. And so happy we're here. Life, I, I actually wanted to go to Charleston, but she, she uh, put her foot down. So. Well, I would have traded. I would have traded that one for you, but I'd, I'd prefer Charleston too. I've been to both, but <laughs> well, when you when I show you Huntsville, you, I'm gonna totally change that mindset. I hope you do. You guys are talking about West Virginia, Virginia, right? Because the What's last that? time I was in Huntsville, I was <laughs> Charleston, there for, West Virginia, right? No. <laughs> no. The last time I was there, I was there for five days because there was supposed to be a gas conference down there, and a hurricane was coming in, so everything got canceled the minute I landed in Huntsville. And I couldn't get a flight out and it never did anything there. I sat in a hotel for five days and it like barely rained and there was no wind. And I, the only thing I saw about Huntsville was the Walmart and the, uh, the, the <laughs> Longhorn Steakhouse that was across the street from my hotel. Daddy, so my, Daddy where'd you find these guys, man? Listen, that's my complete, that's my complete him. knowledge of Huntsville, Alabama. We yeah, found they, him. Don't let they, him fool you. They found me, man. They, I'm the late to the party out of the crew. So Chad I'm, has been with Upsco eight years. Joe's been there eleven. I'm the I'm the newbie at four. So yeah, they so, found me. So I will say I welcome the opportunity to get to learn Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, I would like to do that as well. There's no. a, you guys have a Division One hockey team. Probably going to be great. That's we, sure. we did. We don't we don't have it anymore. We did. I thought they were coming uh, back again. Well, I hope so. Uh, we have a double A uh, hmm. hockey team, but we don't have a division one. Yeah, they were very good in their day. Yeah, they what were. The Huntsville what? Uh, well, it was the Huntsville Chargers. Chargers. It's now yeah. the the double uh, A team is, or it might be single a hell. I don't know. It's called the Huntsville Havoc. They got a great following here. Yeah, they're an um, STHL team, Southern Professional League. There you go. You know your yeah. hockey. Well, we his, son, one, his, yeah. his son's a big hockey guy. Yeah, we had <laughs> one. We had one guy make it in the pros. Uh, Jared uh, and I'm drawing a blank, but his daddy coached um, Huntsville. Um, oh, that's the, cool. Jared Stahl, UAH. Was it Jared Stahl? 
Was it Jared Stahl? Stahl from Half I remember there was one hockey player. Like, I saw this thing a long time ago that there was one hockey player from Alabama, and I don't remember who it was. I remember that. I remember seeing that statue. The statue now. <laughs> I know, I'm going I'm I'm to Google it now. <laughs> Anyways. So I, 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 oh, go ahead, Jed. I'm sorry. I, I, you have a really good view on all this stuff. So why don't you tell us where the future takes us in the industry? Where do you see that going? And, you know, as far as public opinion oh. and just all of it, yeah, where, where, yeah. does it where does it take us? Um, Jared Dowd. Yeah. I, here's the deal. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to go backwards. I, I, you know, I'm a half glass full guy. So we're going through a time right now. We got a little deal with Putin. Um, I was at an I was at a meeting yesterday, and it wasn't even a natural gas meeting. It was actually um, cyber and uh, cyber security and uh, uh, protectives for your cameras and physical security. And I had an admiral come in, a retired admiral come in, and talk about Putin from 1999. I think it's amazing if you read about him. Um, I, I don't want to be a mean guy, and I know I'm being taped and all, but somebody we need to something needs to happen with that dude. Uh, no, he is hold on, let's up this. He's, yeah. he's got it. He's, he's, um, he's got the whole world in a, in a mess. And I think if we could fix that, then we could figure out how to fix our own country into natural gas. It needs to get back into going after it. Uh, fracking, uh, you know, we got to tell the story that fracking is not what it was maybe 40, 50 years ago. It's, it's not messing up the water. It's not doing, um, um, where, uh, uh, what happens out in California where they have earthquakes. Um, it's not doing all that. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I believe that we got to push harder and combine heat and power. You know, I, I truly, even though we want to attack the residential community, I think we'll be better off. Yes, we need to do that. But I also think we need to be also chasing the commercial industrial area. So for instance, uh, we had a meeting, we were going to have a meeting last week, but one of my guys got COVID, so we're going to change it. You, you're familiar with the company Centos. Yeah, well, Sintos yeah. does cleans their laundry yeah. to clean uniforms. Well, they use a significant amount of electricity and they mm -hmm. don't use any natural gas. Well, they're in a perfect location right now for me to not even screw up my electricity. See, I'm playing the electricity versus the gas. <laughs> that's my municipality world. But this is one that they're getting their electricity from somewhere else. And we're going to go out and talk to them about combined heat and power. We're actually talking to our hospital about doing more of that. Um, mm -hmm. And we just got to, you know, when, they, when the facilities are getting older and are getting ready to do a rehab, we need to get in the game and right. the ones we're building from scratch. But, you know, we got to have our, we got to have our head in the game with our chambers of commerce. We got to have our hand in the game with the cities that have economic development. And I'm, I'm positive that we're not as engaged in that space as we need to be engaged in that space. So do you, do you think it's because I, I and to be honest, I, I it's a serious question. Do you think it's because of I, I don't know how to really poise this question because of the the the, the political affiliation of leadership? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. So, and the, so, yeah. my, so John, my question is at what point in time or how do you get people that are in positions of leadership or in positions of let's say power? To, to make decisions that make sense versus making decisions that make them popular and, 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 and to keep their jobs. Because well, that's, what, that's, that's what I feel like is, is really a big problem is that people, yeah. you, you, you see it every day and, and it boggles my mind that what goes on and the things that are said and the lies that are told about so many things and people aren't held accountable to it. So if you're not holding leadership accountable, how do we ever get to a point where they're making decisions that are based on reality, not on yeah. how popular it makes them? I don't. Well, I, I, I'll this. share this because I feel like I got a little bit of leg on this one because I one thing I didn't share with you and Ted knows about it. I was a city councilman for four years here in town oh. as well. So from 10 to 14, I played in that space. Now, that's not my lane. I'm My whole lane was try to take care of my district. But what I'm sharing with you is we have a wonderful mayor. We have a wonderful staff. I, there is no politics at my level in that space. Sure. But I would argue it's easier to do electric because that's what they've always done. Right. They've, never, they've never laid out a portfolio that says we can not only do electric, we can also do natural gas. And here's where I'm going to give an example. Toyota Mazda is here now. We're building vehicles out there. 
We spent almost $9 million to, walk, to run gas lines out to them. They are arguably, when they're full up, going to be, but that was an easy sell, Joe and Chad. And you know why I was at? Because they got to have that dang burn heat to paint yeah. the vehicles. You know what yeah. I'm saying? An easy sell. But when we're doing a company that really can just survive off electricity, and here's the other thing, resiliency. It, we, it needs to be a backup no matter what they Correct. do. Yes, Correct. that you're right. especially in your area. Yeah. And, and I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I said this not too long ago. I pulled up the stat that on average, there, or there's an outage, a power outage, and one in one of one of one electric you know, so if, yeah, everybody so one has one ratio, electric. Be like 15 this year in, 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 in natural gas it's one in 800 so well, and so and so give you another example we had a tornado that went through an 11 and knocked us out of power for five for five uh days um i had a, i had an rv at the time so i was able to use my rv to power some things that my i had a grinder pump and had to do some things i could do but um i'll give you an example we were, we were, we were, uh, we were in trouble um, because not enough generators. Well, then we put into megawatt generators and we put in, because we weren't even talking natural gas then, and we put in diesel. Well, guess what? We can't even use the diesel unless it's a crisis because of ADEM. Well, at Alabama, you know, it, you know our, our world, but we built a new water treatment facility down near Gunnersville. And guess what's there? Two megawatt natural gas. It'll never have to worry about. Best decision we ever made. Mm-hmm. Now we wish we'd go back and do the same thing because you can actually use natural gas generation to peak shave in your yep. electric space. Yes. Yep. And, and see, here's a good point I'm making to you guys. The gas guys carrying the water ain't going to cut it. It's got to be gas electric combos that carry that water because they're 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 both ways and then if you throw an outfit like mine in there where we do water as well um it's because it, for instance uh just want to blank her name the lady the lady's going to be two behind me I'm just, ooh, kathy garcia she's cps out of san antonio they're a great outfit to talk to have this discussion with knoxville is a great outfit to have this discussion Easy. with uh, Memphis is a great outfit to have this discussion with. And those are all in my space because we do, all of us do two or three things. And it's an offer. You know, um, we were 48,000 electric gas customers nine years ago, and now we're 63,000. That's funny. Um, and it's just. But I think one of the problems is like, and I see this, I see this happening already. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but you're on the smaller side of a gas utility. When you get into the bigger gas utilities, specifically dual gas utilities that are electric and gas, they're caving to the messaging that electric is better because they don't care. I mean, I see it where I live. I'm getting things saying, you know, switch to electric, it's better. And I'm like, they're dual utilities, but they don't mind robbing their left pocket to put money back in their right. And there's something wrong with that. Yeah. And, and I don't know how like big cities are, are big gas utilities that have big utility, big cities that have dual utilities in them, how you, they don't care where the money comes from. So they'll jump on board with electrics better, even though they're a gas utility, because they're just, pay, they, they make more money by selling electric anyways. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know how you get past We saw that, that email that email I highlighted in our group last yeah. week. You know, where, where the, the, one thing I, the one thing I do want to transition to before we let you go is I know that you did started something cool recently in your podcast, and you started doing this back up in Minneapolis, you said. So I just want to talk a little bit before we let you go about um, you know, what, that, what that looks like and what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish with, uh, yeah. with into our world. And make sure well, you I'll tell you what, through it, your public speaking into well, there, too. Well, yes. Um, I, um, I'm blessed that I, I, I do okay in that space. I love to talk about leadership. I love to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the mistakes I made, the good things I made. I like to talk about it. I have a, um, easily a dozen great Americans right now from former U.S. congressmen to retired general officers and stuff that can speak to any subject. So all that to say, I'm going to be having all those kind of guys on my show or my podcast. 
um, more, I'm have my mayor will be on the podcast. My, my boss will be on the podcast. But what I liked about Minneapolis was I was able to bring Dave Shriver on there, but five minutes later, I brought Mason Matthews out of Athens, yeah. who's the gas guy there. And then five seconds, five minutes later, I brought um, another, a, 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 a vendor in. I brought Magnolia River in to talk. Did and Dave basically, it? I learned from, I have to admit, I learned because I'm learning from you guys today because I just love this. Um, what, I'm, what I learned was I, I, I got to be more prepared and ask questions because I will tell you the first thing they said to me the other day is, sir, you got a guy with you. Let him ask the dad burn question. Why are you asking the question? And I went, well, you know, hey, I, I didn't know any different anyway. Um, so my point is, I know now I'm going to want to do this. I know now I want to do them at the conferences because when Teddy and I were at the one in um, out in, out in uh, Texas. Texas they didn't tell us this, but we walked in and the first thing they said, and I was on there, I might've been before Ted or after, I don't know, but their, their, their uh, thing was be brave. Yeah. Now, I know this is your brother. I know this is your, that was their last is your brother on here right now, Ted, but I had just spent two hours with Ted and we're talking about combat operations and about seeing the mess of the world and the dude asked me about Be Brave. I get goosebumps talking about it. And I go, shit, I just talked to Ted Pete over here. That's <laughs> what being brave is all about. Now, argue now, Be Brave could mean stand up and be counted for now in the natural gas business. Let's do what the right thing to do is. Right. Let's not cave to, to make it easier. Let's do the hard things. Um, that's what I'm trying to get at. And I just I think it's just being voice. brave in every it's, facet of your life, you know? Yeah, you, you know, and um, I... Like I said, I jokingly say this, but I mean it. I didn't know how to spell it. And now I do. I know the I know that what these guys, first of all, let me say this before I forget. As a public speaker, we historically go, thank our military, thank our veterans, thank our police, thank our firefighters. We missed an entire industry. The gas guys, the water guys, the electric guys. We have a storm life sustaining, in. life sustaining. We freaking missed it. In fact, no one so cares bad. about those until they need them. <laughs> and, and it and it happened. And the worst part about it is when you have a, and I like to speak <laughs> electric more on this. That's what's nice about being in a combo is when a vehicle hits a pole and knocks it down. The first people on scene is. The electric outfit before the police, before right. the firefighter, before your, you know, your ambulance. And those guys have done CPR on the site. Those guys have pulled people out of vehicles. And damn. So I, I make it a personal crusade to never speak publicly and not talk about that too. <laughs> well, so your podcast, what's the name of it? Where can it be seen? I know well, it's it going to be the, the, it ha, the podcast is going to be freedom to fuel. Uh, that's that's what we're doing. I'm going to ask. That'll be the first thing. One of the first, you know, tell me about yourself, blah, blah, blah. And then the first thing I'm going to say is, hey, tell me what you think about freedom and fuel and just get their mind thinking where they're going to go. Now, after you get bald, everybody's thinking about it a little bit now because they get in there. But like Mason Matthews was my first guy. And I said freedom to fuel to him. And I thought his, I thought he's going to go from white to <laughs> a ghost. Um, but uh, the goal is to do it. Now, here's where I'm, I, have, I have an advantage over you. Um, hey. for instance, well, the advantage I have is kill the interview, gonna, kill it, Teddy. I'm stop recording. Done. I'm going to have a my mayor and my my boss all do it the same day, within 30 minutes of each other, over in my in my room. That it's a re, it's set up for this. Maybe uh, my we'll guy, have him on first. Yeah. So you, you see what I'm getting. So now I want to I'm going to do these. So I learned a lot from this today, and I can't wait for when you go live and I mean we send this out. So my team can see this because cool. they'll get all kind of ideas out of this. Well, I just I just want to say thanks, John, for coming on. I feel like we could talk to you for probably another few hours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We've never, Chad and I have never met you in person, but I'm certainly looking forward to it. Um, I think the, probably the first opportunity would be in Savannah in October. Um, but, um, you know, I think we have a lot more to talk about. I, I honestly commend you for, no offense, I don't mean this in, in a bad way, but getting outside of your comfort zone and doing something different that you feel is good for the industry. I, I wish more people would. Um, we've talked about it with Jim and James in the past before getting way too much press on our show this week. 
um, that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that we don't see any of these as competition. We see this as all really good. So if anybody gets inspired to do anything beyond that, whether it be a podcast, a webcast, a blog, anything like that, post on LinkedIn, or Facebook or whatever, you know, every single bit of information that gets put out there that people get to see is important. So I want to obviously thank you for jumping on board with, with your podcast and, and thank you for coming on our show. And we just really appreciate having you here. And it's, it's been great to meet you. So you know what they say in Alabama? No. Roll Tide. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> and on that note, Seriously, Colonel. Don't they um, say go Chargers in Huntsville, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Carl, Nick Dowd seriously. from Huntsville, Alabama, by the way. Nick Dowd. He was your professional hockey player from Huntsville. There you go. Uh, All right. From, from my perspective, my friend, listen, it was an absolute pleasure when we met each other in Texas. And for you to be able to, to join the show today, I'm just I, – I'm really blessed. It's another avenue where our lives was intersected. And they say when you meet somebody and – and you, you share those kind of moments. It's a, it's a special opportunity and to see it continue on. is really awesome. So thank you so I much. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. Thanks, uh, we'll talk appreciate to you soon. You. And, hey, by the way, I love the yellow and I love all that. So that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. That's why I had to stall for the first five minutes. <laughs> John, what a tremendous interview as always. But uh, anytime I got to chat with you, I've really enjoyed it. Um, you you fit in seamlessly with Larry and, and Curly here, and we're able to conduct the interview. You're which, Mo. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can be. <laughs> no, you're definitely. Uh, hold on. Mo. All right, Mo and Curly then, and I'll be Larry. I don't care who it is. I, I still no think you'd be Curly. Chad, why did you change your background to mountains? It was the still Alps. the weekly gas fact, and I forgot to do it before we came back in. He's in the Alps. I just want to say thank. This is the first time I got to meet John. What an interesting guy. Um, be, I can't wait to get out of Huntsville and love the energy operation and stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's really passionate about the industry. It's nice to see. He's got a cool story, obviously. Um, and uh, just a another person that probably we would never had an opportunity to really get to know if he hadn't come on the show. So looking forward to actually meeting John in person someday. And I think actually I'll see him at APGA in October, um, in Savannah, Georgia. So looking forward to that. So thank you, John. I concur. I can't add a whole lot more there. So now we're going to run an audience pool. We're going to see. I don't think it's a pool. 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 P -O -L -L. You jump in the pools. Not pool. You oh, run a pool. pool. Go ahead anyways. Sorry. Well, but you pool your audience. No, you pull your audience. This is one of those normal Teddy oh, words. Stop. <laughs> this, is a, this is a Tedism. Stop. <laughs> Tedism. It it's is. getting worse. If you you're really, watching, he's googling it, which is even would be the audience. If you're watching, comment ha ha, and we'll know that we have viewers at the end of our episodes. We I just guys, wait. I would just be interested to see if anybody actually watches after the interview. If actually anybody watches at all, like, are we still do? Are we doing this for any reason other than for our own like enjoyment? I don't even know if it's that anymore. Camaraderie. <laughs> we love you guys. Click like, subscribe. Ha ha, click it, click. Ha ha. Comment. Ha ha.